Greetings brothers and sisters. Welcome back once again to Kendo Farms, Maxfield edition. So here we are out here today. A uh, beautiful, gorgeous day, man. Just uh, maybe four days short, five days short of the, uh, the eclipse that's coming up here in Oregon. We're all prepped up for that, man. It's going to be a wild, wild time out here in Oregon. Expect, uh, you know, it, it actually the entire population of Oregon to come in as tourists. They're expecting two to three million people to come here. There's, there's about three million people in the whole state of Oregon. Holy shit. It's going to be a wild time. I, got, I personally have some people coming out to, uh, to visit. It's going to be a great time. Um, today, we're going to talk about uh, another one of the, uh, the uh, kendo stories, right? Like I told you, I have a million of them, man. It's been a really storied event, a uh, storied lifetime. Uh, multiple different stories that surround cannabis, growing cannabis, cannabis people, people I've met, uh, parties I've been to. Great, great time. Well, let's start off. We'll talk about archive seeds here. That's right. My brother Doc, man. Known Doc for quite some time. He's a uh, standout legend in the industry. Put out some really, really great uh, strains. Known him for quite some time. Overgrow, Cannabis World. A lot of history there. Oh yeah. Archive Seeds. If you don't have any of their gear, get some. You'll love it. Um, so let's go ahead and start off with a story. It's going to be a two-part story, right? It's got two different parts to it. The first part is going to be about uh, the breeding process, how I came, came about with a certain strain, how I came about doing it. And then the second part is going to be about uh, um, a little story that's kind of funny, <clears throat> a little bit different. I think you're going to enjoy it. But the way that I bred and the way that I started actually breeding, I met an individual named Preservation Dude, PD, Gary. Um, I met him on Cannabis World. This is Overgrow Cannabis Days. And uh, Gary was a, a long time breeder. He was a member of the 77 crew, a uh, very storied individual, just an incredible preservationist, preservation dude, PD. So we'll, we'll call him PD from here on out. But PD took me on as my, as my mentor. He taught me a lot about breeding. He taught me about different aspects. Uh, my, my methods and what I was looking for was different than what he was doing. He was a preservationist. Uh, I wanted to create new strains. I wanted to create things from older strains, different things that were about, you know, and, and, and do things my own way. <clears throat> so he took me through the process and gave me some, uh, some really, really solid, solid foundational information for me to, to make my decisions and, and go about breeding. Uh, one of the things that he did for me was he gave me one of his prized possession, which was some original G13 hash plant seeds. Uh, these seeds were some of the original seeds that were given out to members of the 77 crew from the G13 hash, hash plant genetics. And uh, from my understanding, these were probably about the best seeds that ever came out of that lineup. Well, he gave them to me as a means uh, to begin my breeding process. That was going to pull uh, multiple males from that and breed across different lineups, different females that I found that were stellar that I wanted to uh, create my lines from. So I took those uh, G13 hash plant seeds and I found six incredible males. I believe he gave me about 25 seeds. I found six incredible males. I found multiple females, grew them out, but I wasn't trying to recreate the lineup of seeds. Or I was just trying to find the best males. So I took those six, put them out, let them grow up to be about six feet tall, pulled incredible amounts of pollen. I mean, so much pollen off of all those males combined it all together for diversity, and then put it across multiple different strains. Uh, the Grapefruit Haze, um, what else, Spaceship, uh, multiple different ones, lots of different um, exciting strains that I got from different people that had really, really been crowing about them. One of the strains that I put it across was an old school Santa Cruz Purple Haze. And this old school Santa Cruz Purple Haze I got from an individual um, it was uh, 2005 that I got it from him, and I had met this individual in 1976, right? Uh, I was dating his daughter, or his uh, niece, and we went up to a party up in Santa Cruz. He was part of the Santa Cruz Brotherhood. Uh, we went up to a party up in Santa Cruz. I pulled out some of my herbs, right? He wanted to know if I grew it. Yes, I grew it. He was impressed with the herb, you know, for a young kid my age that I grew such, you know, really good pot. And so he, he took a liking to me. And he you know, kind of took me under his wing, uh, got me going. And he was one of the original guys that had that old school purple haze, the original real purple haze out there in Santa Cruz. 
So, you know, he took me through. He introduced me to a lot of different people. He took me up to Trinity Humboldt, uh, Mendocino, the Emerald Triangle. He took me up there, introduced me to a lot of people, got me a lot of work trimming weed, uh, harvesting, doing a lot of different things, right? It was the beginnings. And, uh, you know, I, I really enjoyed myself with this individual. Um, after I broke up with her, uh, we still kept in contact for a while, but we ended up losing contact, right? Fast forward to 2005, I'm walking around Santa Cruz with my family, and uh, this guy just comes walking up to me, comes up behind me. I was wearing this uh, <clears throat> this off-purple shirt, um, and, he, and he just comes walking up, and he's like, you know, you really got to have a lot of nuts to wear a purple shirt like that up here in Santa Cruz. Somebody might come up and grab your butt. And I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? You're going to grab my butt, dude? What the hell? And he's like, you don't recognize me? Well, he, he didn't have a beard when I met him, right? But at this point now, he had this really big beard. And so he's, you know, he says, I'm, I'm, I'm fucking Earl, bro. I'm, I'm Earl, you know, blah, blah, blah. He started, you know, with a little bit of history. And I was like, holy shit, man, really? Been so long, gave him a big hug, you know, thanked him for all of his mentorship and everything that he put me through, you know, explained to him that I've been growing now for, you know, professionally for quite some time, you know, uh, started off with the, the uh, Cali medical scene, and did a bunch of stuff, was into activism, lots of different things. We talked for like an hour until my family finally pulled me away. They were like, holy shit, Dad, let's go. We're here to enjoy ourselves. So we exchanged numbers. So I went up to Santa Cruz to go visit him, and he actually was still breeding the Purple A's. He was reinvigorating the line, constantly making new seeds, you know, about every five years making a new seed run. And so he still had um, specimens, phenotypes, that were dead on the original Purple A's. I was not able to get those particular phenotypes. He wasn't giving those out to anybody. But he gave me one that was something that came out pretty much every time that he did a new run, and he called it the Freak. The, sand, the uh, Purple Haze wasn't really big fatty nugs. It wasn't really big fat buds, right? It was a little bit different, right? A little bit thinner, a little bit more airy um, than, than, you know, what a lot of people like. But this particular one, the Freak, just grew these big old fist-sized buds, man, that were just purple as fuck, and they had that distinct 100% purple haze smell and flavor and high, all the above, right? They just were different. It was a different phenotype and growth structure and everything else, and these were things that he would normally just toss out, right, because it wasn't the original. And so he gave me this one that he called the Freak, with the understanding that I would use it to breed with and then cull it afterwards, not keep it, right, because he just didn't want that to be... Uh, something that got out or whatever have you. So I used that bad boy and I grew uh, two plants for seed and then I grew one plant for personal. Right? So the progeny from that was the purple haze, right? which I will be putting out here soon enough. And, and I pulled multiple seeds from those two plants. But the third one was my personal. And so now we get to part two of this story. So part two, um, that year, I was actually invited to a big harvest party. My, my good friend and mentor, NCGA's harvest party. And this party was populated by lots and lots of overgrow people, cannabis world people, um, you know, pot stars in the business, right? Um, I met Jack, well, I knew Jack Herrera already, but I was able to sit down with him. I, uh, Eddie Lemp, able to sit down with him, break bread, talk over and over again, spend multiple hours with him. DJ Short. Um, Jason King, uh, Ed Rosenthal, multiple different people showed up at this harvest party, right? It really was a great gig, great food. NCGA uh, had a catering company, just supplied just incredible food. 20 foot long table that people would just throw out these mason jars, quart mason jars full of their best products. And you could just walk around, sample, roll, take buds out, take them home, do whatever you chose to do with them, right? It was a fantastic party. So we're all sitting around, we're having a great time, man. Everybody's enjoying the fuck out of themselves. Just a beautiful thing. I mean, I, I can honestly say, probably some of the best parties I've ever been to. Cannabis parties. So, like I said, Jack Herrer was there at this particular party. And we're hanging out, Jack and I are hanging out, we're talking over and over again. He, he uh, signed a new edition copy of uh, his Emperor Wears No Clothes for Me, did his classic Jack, you know, cartoon character, love you can, blah, 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 blah. It was a great day hanging out with him. Well, I pulled out some of this purple haze. And Jack being Jack, he smelled it, and he was like, holy shit, 
Is that purple haze that I smell? Is that purple haze? Let me get some of that. So, you know, we pull it out, man. I show him the buds, right? He's like, oh my God, this is just beautiful. I haven't seen anything like this in decades. This is just fantastic. I'm so excited to be able to sample some of this product. So he pulls out his Jack Herrera little proto, proto pipe, right? Which is a wooden pipe. Many of you know exactly what I'm talking about. His, his signature Jack Herrera pipe. He pulls out his Jack Herrera pipe and he, he stuffs it with some, some purple haze. He takes a big old hit. Well, Jack, man, he's just wet lipping the shit out of this pipe, right? Just wet lipping the shit out of it, right? Takes a big old fat hit, lets it out, turns to me and stuffs the freaking pipe in my mouth, man, right? So I might as well have been French kissing Jack Herrera, dude. It was so wet. It was just wet, lipped all so terrible, you know. And, you know, being Jack, I, I didn't I wasn't, right? I was just like, oh, all right, man. Took a nice big hit, blah, blah, blah. We talked some more. So after that, pipe is empty. I rolled a big old fatty joint, nice big fat thumb joint. And sitting around this table were probably about 10 of us, man. Me, Jack, and multiple other people from Overgrow, lots of us. We're just having nice conversations. Roll that fatty up, start passing it around. Goes around the table once, comes back. Goes around the table again, comes back. By that time, it's about halfway done. This particular strain, by the time you got halfway down, it was that type of strain where the whole joint now was black. The rest of the joint was just black, just full and full of resin, man, so bad. And by the time it got to that point, it was really, really lung buster. I mean, it would just make your lungs just expand and just kick out, man. You just couldn't help but cough like nobody's business, right? So it's going around and everybody's getting a good cough going, man. Hack, hack, hack. Well, Jack gets it and he takes just this big old fat hit. Well, at that time, Jack was sick. Man. He, he had, you know, he had lots of different health problems. And he just starts coughing. He's just coughing away, man, you know, and, and you know, it, it, after a while, it became a little bit um, concerning, right? He's just, you know, we're talking like two or three minutes. Jack just straight coughing, not being able to stop. So then, all of a sudden, Jack starts turning blue. And, you know, I became very, very worried. Jack starts turning blue. I'm thinking he's going to fucking die right there, man. So I go in the house, and he had, a, he had this guy that they called the Magi. He was from uh, Oklahoma, this church out there in Oklahoma. I believe one of Eddie Lepp's churches. Jack was there with Eddie and this guy. And, uh, and uh, he comes out, and we help Jack up. We get Jack off the table, right, get him into the house, get him sat down, get him calmed down. Magi is, you know, massaging his legs because Jack had uh, diabetes, um, getting him calmed down, getting him relaxed, and then Jack falls asleep. So to continue on, we get, uh, we get Jack back into his, this uh, reclining chair, right, get him calmed down, get him to stop coughing, um, get his... Uh, just get him relaxed, right? And within just a few minutes, within just a few minutes, Jack falls asleep. And he's out, okay? So, man, you know, I was really nervous. I was really upset, man. I thought, you know, he's going to pass away right there in front of my eyes, man. So I get get out, go back, right? And all these guys are sitting out underneath the tent um, at the chair. I come walking out, and they just start fucking cracking up, man. They're just cracking up laughing, man. And, you know, I'm still pretty goddamn upset, man. I'm upset. I thought, you know, Jack was going to die right there, man. So I come out, and I'm like, God damn it, guys, this is not fucking funny at all, man. What the fuck? This is not funny at all. So my buddy is sitting there, right? He's like, ah, fuck yeah, that was funnier than shit, bro. We're out here talking about Kendo, the stoner who almost killed Jack Herrera, and how you were going to be a fucking legend, fucking terrible, fucking almost killing Jack Herrera out there, man. You know, so I had to laugh. I thought it was kind of funny, right? So that was one of the things but that, uh, you know, set me with a lot of these guys that were there, right? was, you know, now I'm a stoner who almost killed Jack Herrera. And, you know, I, fucking, I couldn't live that down for years. I'd be online on Overgrow or, or uh, Cannabis World. And these guys would come out and be like, oh, yeah, shut up. You almost killed Jack Herrera. You're an asshole. Blah, blah, blah. So that's just another one of those stories, man, um, of that party. I got some other ones from that party, too. We talks with Eddie Lepp. And, some things about the Mendo Perps and some other things about that partic that particular party. But we'll get into that another time because it's going to be a nice long video. But yeah, that's another one of those Kendo stories. A little basic uh, history on my breeding and how I started off breeding. And then a little history on uh, some of the different uh, aspects of craziness that can happen in the cannabis world. But let's end this with peace and love from Kendo Farms.